always do what you say you're going to do and do it. No excuses. Like if you're starting out in business, that's the one thing I can say. That's the mm -hmm. biggest hack I've learned in 40 years. That'll save you. Nobody wants to hear. We may be able to do it. I should be able to do it. I could be able to do it. You just say, absolutely. You can do it and get it done with no excuses. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, we have a special guest, Steve, joining us. Steve is an experienced entrepreneur in the landscape architecture industry. He's faced numerous challenges and setbacks, but has always come out stronger. In this episode, Steve shares his incredible journey, the highs, the lows, and the invaluable lessons he's learned along the way. So grab a seat and get ready for an inspiring conversation. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on to the podcast today. Glad to be here. I just want to thank you for coaching me on that last little thing about the lighting and the sound much better. Not as good as yours, but I'm glad to be here and I appreciate the tips for sure. 100%. I want to make sure that you look the best because you are on a podcasting guest journey and you've, you've done a lot of appearances and I'm, I'm really proud of you because that's something that I want to do myself, do more guest appearances, but you know, you, you take what you can and you keep going. And I absolutely love that. So thank you so much. Glad to be here. All right. So Steve, let's take a walk down memory lane and rediscover your origin story. We're going to spend a little bit of time on here. I want to learn about how you got where you are today. And then after the intro, after the little origin story, we're going to dive deep and then really tell the people what it takes to be as successful as you are. So let's get started. How far back you want to go? I'll give you the not too far back. Just give you like the highlights. I'll give you the highlights. So, yeah. so I mean, you know, I, I, I studied landscape architecture school at university. I went to Mississippi state studied landscape architecture. My father was in the union contracting business in New York city. And in the winter times I would come home from school and work with him in the city, mm -hmm. in the union. So they, when you work in New York city, the mindset is totally different from working at every place else. Uh, I learned the mindset of, there's no excuses, rain, sleet, snow, the job must get done. So I carry that into my own business yeah. where anytime we do a project, you always have to like, there's no excuses. Nobody wants to hear your, your woes. They just want the job done on time, on budget and good quality. So that's the very short version of it. I've been doing this for 40 years. Um, that's the real abbrevi abbreviated <laughs> version. Well, Steve, tell me this, what inspired you? to go into landscape architecture. I mean, I love architecture myself. I architect rooms and studios for people all day long, but what really inspired you to go down that path when you were going to school? I mean, even take one of those aptitude tests before you get out of high school. It's like check the boxes. I didn't mm -hmm. check the boxes of being in an office. I didn't check the boxes of, you know, studying computers. It was more mm -hmm. check the boxes, creativity, design. It kind of just fell in that thing. So. Yeah it logically led me to the outside I didn't want to wow. sit in an office. So working outside and that's how it kind of fell into that. That's pretty that's, much, that's pretty much it. Wow. That's, that's really powerful. I don't remember taking that aptitude test or maybe I did. I don't remember anything about it, but that's a really, really clear vision of, of, you know, what led you where you are. And a lot of people, or maybe that's how it was back then, right? I mean, now we have like all sorts of technology. Now we have like all sorts of things that are possible for students, for people getting out of high school. I would imagine, because when I started, we would have the beepers. The, the, my sons, they don't even know what a beeper is. Like, <laughs> yes, I'm 63. I'm going way back. Yeah, it was basically a printout after two texts where you hand wrote, check the boxes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, you don't, you certainly don't show your age, my friend. Well, thank um, you, sir. <laughs> let's go deeper in, into your business that you're currently running. What keeps you coming back and, and like, what keeps you motivated and inspired to come back every, each and every day? Like what's, what, 
you know, I think, what is this? You know, I, I'm involved in this mastermind group called ALP, where a bunch of guys get together from all over the country and stands for altitude, logic, and pressure. It's a sales mm. thing. And I'm the oldest guy in there. And they all say to me the same thing. It's like, why do you keep doing this? I, I think it goes back to like, I just can't see myself retiring and sitting on a beach and playing golf. When you're in your own business, there that's a fallacy. That's a misbelief that you can just retire and kick back. And, you know, unless you're like Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates, that you can just sit back and retire. When you're in the contracting yeah. business and design, it, it's just a never ending process. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to see how far I can push myself. Right. That's, yeah. what, that's why I keep going. I, I absolutely love that because when you're working for yourself, you're not, first of all, you didn't start to work for yourself because you were forced to. It's because you wanted to. You get to do what we want to do every single day, right? And and when that's the case, then you want that's to keep a, doing that's it. A, that's a, everybody's like, oh, you're so lucky. You get to take vacation <laughs> whenever you want to. That's false. Like That's it's false. false. Okay. It's it's not that. Everybody's like, oh, you're the boss, you make all the money. It's mm. not. It's a lot of risk. Mm. When you're an entrepreneur and you're striving, you got to make sure that the paychecks are there. You got to make sure you have work. Like yeah. there's a lot of risk. It's yeah. it's not, you know, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Because you you get to control that destiny, right? You get to control, but but not just the control too, right? There's also the the pro being the provider for employment for the people that are working for you. Like they're making a living because of what you created. Well, they kind of look up to you as the leader. Like, yeah, I, I think if to run, you either have it or you don't have it. Like mm -hmm. if you, if you need to have a thick stomach. I was in business in 2008 when the, when the stock market crashed and mm -hmm. they repossessed my, my, my two cars. And I think, you know, just the perseverance of just keep fighting. And, you know, it's true. Like never give up. It's, yeah. You hear that all the time, but it, it's, it is true. Steve, let's uh, talk us through one of the areas where it almost felt like you didn't want to continue, but you came back and like, for example, you, you know, in 2008, tell me like, let's go deeper into that. Like what kept you, Okay, they've repossessed. Like, how would you continue? Like, that's a hook right there. I mean, it, it, I still remember the night, like, clear as day. Like, they came to the house at like three in the morning, and my wife's like, somebody's out by the cars, out by the cars with flashlights. I came outside, said, What's going on? They were very polite, very nice. And they said, Listen, we got to take your cars. You missed three or four payments. Mm. And I said, All right, so I had to take my two sons' car seats out of it. I'll never forget that. Took the car seats out of it. Yeah. Right? And I mean, you just, like, what options do you have? Like, you have a wife, you have kids, you have a mortgage. Like, what are you going to do? You have to be a man and stand up and just, yeah. you know, figure it out. That's what I did. Just hung in there. And then besides, uh, Janut, I don't know anything else. Like, yeah. landscape design is, that's all I know. Yeah. I'm not going to be, that's what I know. I don't know anything else. Wow. That I mean, that's, got to be insane because you're you're providing for your family and now you can't go around no you couldn't even get business it was bad back then nobody was doing landscaping people were losing i mean people were losing their homes and their businesses and all it was really bad it was way worse than covid yeah so here's let's uh take another look at entrepreneurship right so i'm teaching high school students entrepreneurship huh, what's good. what are what are some of the lessons that would inspire them to say hey this is something that's going to change what you do with the rest of your life what do you mean change what you're going to do with the rest of your life like you're so the, you teach you really you teach entrepreneurship to high school kids yes so these guys are young kids that they think entrepreneurship is the cool thing right now right what i would tell them it's not easy it's a lot of risk and it's not for the faint of heart. If you can stand mm -hmm. those, if you can stand those, you have a stomach that you're yeah. not going to maybe get a paycheck, but you got to pay your employees. Yes. You can step right up. But if you're not, you better move out of the way right now. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. So let's say they didn't 
they they learn about entrepreneurship they know it's hard and they but what are, what are some of the mindsets that they can employ in their regular jobs let's say they don't start work for themselves but i'm sure there's some kind of mindset they they can take away from i got it i got it so like i recommend when they you know to take a job somewhere in high school come out learn on somebody else's dime mm. like learn the mistakes biggest thing is learn from other people's mistakes you hear that a lot too like i mean i've made so many mistakes yeah hundreds of mistakes can't even count them all like oof, can't even make so learn from somebody who's made the mistakes don't try to figure it out all on your own yeah and put your pride in your pocket and op- shut your mouth open your ears and listen. It's a simple formula. That's it. That you can close the textbook right from there. There it is. Close your mouth and open your ears. Definitely. And learn from other people. Let them learn on their dime, not your dime. Learn. Yeah. Because they're paying you to come do some kind of work, but then you continue to grow your mindset, continue to, build something build that muscle build that muscle build that muscle of rejection build that muscle of it's not going to be easy just keep building it and always keep in the back of your head like it's worth it like it is worth it like it's no other way to explain it like yeah i remember when i was 16 years old i never Mm -hmm. forget this 16 years old i was working washing dishes in a catering hall and it, well, the guys would come outside and they, one guy said to me, oh, why do you want to work somebody, for somebody else and live somebody? Why do you want to live somebody else's dream? Right. That was yeah. really, I, that was when I was 16. I'm, that was 50 years ago. I still remember that. Like, you're right. So you have a dream to start your own business. Why do you want to live somebody else's dreams? Create your own dream. Yeah. You know, just today I was listening to this song, Make Yourself by Incubus. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's an older song. Older song. Right? Older um, group. Yeah. Older group, older song. Yeah, yeah. And and he's talking about if you don't make yourself, somebody's gonna make you for you. And oh you're yeah. not gonna you're not gonna like that. <laughs> and there's <laughs> nothing you can do about it. Right? I I screenshotted the the picture. But if you really want to live, why not try and make yourself? Like, if you don't have a plan, someone's going to have a plan for you. Yes. And if, because if you don't make yourself, then somebody else will. Or if you don't, if you don't plan for your own life, somebody's going to make a plan for you. Absolutely. Now, there, there's some, some, some of the things that you're doing uh, in urban spaces are sustainable designs. Talk to us a little bit about what, what that means. It's an overused word, I think. It's like, oh, sustainable. I think, you know, we try to design jobs that are native plant material mm-hmm. that will last a long time as far as the material. So you don't have to keep redoing it. You wanted the, the, the motto is do it once, do it right. Mm-hmm. If you're going to build a project, make sure you use top quality material. Don't yeah. use the cheapest guy and just yeah. get it done right. So it lasts a long time. You don't have to spend a lot of money with upkeeping. That's to me is sustainable. Yeah. No, I, I like that a lot. I mean, tell me this, Steve. Share a story behind starting your career with just a real barrel. I think we talked about this. What motivated you? So you're when you're outside, with- right? You're outside. Uh, you took the aptitude test and you're, you know, what motivated you to, to say, hey, I'm gonna take this wheelbarrow. I'm just gonna do this. I mean, when I got out of college, I I, I worked for a guy for like a year and I'm like, I, I can do this. I can do this. I'm selling his jobs. I'm project manager. I can do this. So I bought a piece of junk truck for like 500 bucks, mm-hmm. loaded it up with plants, got my first job. I'll never forget it. And that was it. Like that was 40 years ago. That's a long time. Wow. Long time. Wow. Just to, so, I don't give myself enough credit, actually. I'm very hard on myself. I don't give myself enough credit. I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Mm. That's a, I think that's the true of an entrepreneur. They're never satisfied. I mean, I don't I don't see. I'm on to the next thing already. Like, I don't see it as 
sitting here with you is an honor, right? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm on to the you. next thing already. It's like the fact that you even want to talk to me is big, right? Seriously, it's like you don't think of all these things. I, I appreciate, don't. I appreciate that, and and I think. I think it it has a lot to do like what you're just saying, not appreciating and not realizing or not giving ourselves enough credit. I think it it has to do with how we grew up and how we were brought up, right? Oh, you got to keep totally. the work, right? There's there's I'm sure there's a lot of stories that you have stories. It's like that. My, it's it's like wow. I grew up. My father was a construction worker, a union construction worker. He would come home every night tired you know, leave at 4.30 in the morning in the middle of the mm. winter. And for years, if I didn't come home dirty and tired, I didn't think I, I didn't think I put it in enough effort. But now wow. as I get older, you work with your brain, not with your back. Like, mm. I don't know. It took, it took 35 years to figure that part out. Like, wow. don't do everything yourself. Like try to delegate and like, you know, become a leader and a manager, not just to yeah. do it. I'll just do it myself. I can do it better. Terrible mindset. Terrible. Wouldn't, that's one thing you can put in here. Like, don't do it that way. Don't do what I did. And I love that. Uh, that thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And, and it's, it's, it's very true. You know, the world has changed and come a long way. And a lot of people talk about self-awareness, you know, being, being happier, being not just happier, but being more self-aware and how it is that they're approaching life. And, and we were there to hopefully guide them. Hey, don't do the way we did it. Find a better way. And there, there's a ton of, ton of books and, and messaging on that. It it's also takes hard work. Like don't, yes. there's no easy way. There's no easy way to the top. You got to take the stairs. Like everybody, I think, wants the shortcut, you know, especially the young kids in high school. Everybody wants to be an influencer. Every, I mean, yeah, you know, it's, they want to make they want to make the money without doing the work. Yes, and that's that's kind of hard to do. And I think the the one thing that that you mentioned was your dad inspiring you. Like if I haven't, if I'm not coming home dirty, if I'm not coming home fully tired. I haven't put in the work, right? That is a very strong, powerful, it's terrible. It's, it's, like it's, it is, it is, it's terrible, but it's also a powerful foundation to be a hard worker, right? But then also integrate the intelligence part of it. Okay. I can do really hard work and I can do hard work and smart work together. Right? Yes. You can work hard, but work smart. Don't just work coming home dead tired and you think you put in a good day i remember working for, working with him in the winter vacations you're mm -hmm. in college you come home for the week you come home from college and all your buddies are out i would stay out all night long mm -hmm. and have to get up at fork i mean i'll never forget those days yeah i just wanted to just cry because i was so tired but but he always got up and went to work you know no matter what um, Amen. so that's really that's really i just grew up with it I love it. All right, let's talk about a little bit, a uh, little in your business, because New York offers a unique challenge in terms of space. How do you approach landscape architecture differently in such urban settings? So, so you know, I think it, it. I use that to my advantage, right? So we work in the suburbs a lot, outside of New York City and in mm -hmm. in New York City, and and the mindset when you work in New York City, you have to logistically. Designing a space in New York, you you constraint. You know the weight of the trees, the weight of the mm. soil. How are you going to get the material up on the roof? There's so you know the traffic, the parking tickets, so many logistical issues you have to think about. So you want to be very efficient, and I try to carry that to all my jobs. Be efficient, mm. and it all starts at the design. You know, everything starts. We're talking about it starts at the design portion of the project. Yeah, for sure. A good design equals a great project. So I'm sure you do sketches and prototypes of, hey, this is what it's going to look like before you even start the work. Absolutely. So so when we do the the, the hand-drawn renderings, we can convert it to a 3D rendering. It's actually just a graphical representation of the mm -hmm. project, and mm -hmm. it keeps everybody on the same page, Yeah. especially with the clients. Like You want to be on that same page with the clients so there's no misunderstandings at all. Nice. And what 
makes your design f- philosophy distinct, especially when catering to celebrity homes and luxury communities? They work. My designs work. I mean, I've been doing it. You know, you see a lot of fancy designs on uh, Instagram and all that, but those mm-hmm. designs look great on paper. I think it, you have yeah. to convert it from, how do you get that design to go from paper to actually implementation without blowing yeah. the budgets, right? Yeah. You know, so so by drawing on 40 years of experience, I know what it's supposed to look like. I know how the grading is supposed to be. I don't yeah. need to have a fancy, the, the picture is only for the client. I know yeah. what it's supposed to look like. I have a vision in my head before right. I even start the job, for sure. I love it. Would you mind discussing a, a project where sustainability, sustainability was particularly challenging and how you addressed it? Sustainability as in what? When I hear sustainable, I think of like um, evergreen or like, sure. you know, I mean, you 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 can make <laughs> sustainability is, is such an overused word, like you mentioned. But for example, you know, but there was a little bit of challenge in hey, we we can't really make it the way they're thinking it's going to happen. But then you still address it and and bringing that creative factor. To oh, it. very simple. So we're doing a project recently where we had to we're putting in a swimming pool. And mm-hmm. We had to jackhammer all the rock oh. 20 30 truckloads of rock so I, I i said listen we can load up these trucks and drive it down the street and beat up the street and make a lot of noise pollution and all that mm-hmm. or we can keep the rocks on the site and build beautiful stone walls mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's almost the same price so yeah so that's my thinking like how do we how do we use what's on site to create you know, to try to sustain, well, you use that word again, yeah. to try to create the words. Maybe we take the dirt from the pool and we build up a berm and we make it look like a golf course and raise yeah, the terrain. Yeah, yeah. So it gives it a little more character, that kind of stuff. That's why when you're on site, when you're designing it, 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 it definitely can use that to your advantage. Uh, that's so that's so smart because running those trucks back and forth does, you know, noise pollution, gas usage, like there's a lot of waste happening there. And then you're going to bring new rocks in. Why not just use the racks? That, that's that's really absolutely. That's it. projects happening right now as we speak about that. Yeah, I love it. Um, how did you land your first celebrity or high end client? It was just referrals, just just okay. referral based from doing it all, and and you know, and I think once you become in that circle, they kind of trust you, know you like you trust you, and they just refer mm-hmm. you to other people. It's a double edged sword when you work with those type of people they don't they i have to respect their privacy so i right. do so of course. you know we have very good relationships with that type of client but demanding for sure mm. um that nobody wants to get ripped off they don't want to get ripped right. off they want a good job and they don't want any headaches they don't yeah. want any headaches yeah nobody wants headaches and they want a good job and they want to be able to trust because guess what that's what literally every human being wants so celebrities are no different they just want more of their privacy and, and don't want to be get ripped off because even though we know that celebrity makes make a lot, a lot of money, they still want to make sure that they're saving money, that they're getting a good job done. They're the, they're the toughest when it comes to that, actually. They, yeah. they work hard for their money, so they don't yes, want to waste do. it. They absolutely do. I love it. Running a top business in New York must come with its own set of unique challenges. Can you share a particular trying time and how you overcame it a a situation where it was tough i mean from trying to get material 34 stories up on a roof to the um and you have a deadline because you can't block the sidewalks after thanksgiving because it's Mm. christmas holidays so you have to have a moratorium on it it's just a whole, I mean, you have to be able to make adjustments on the fly. Yeah. Right. You have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to make quick decisions. Nobody wants you to, you have to look like a leader. Like, you know, how are you going to attack this challenge? You have to lead the troops to battle. Like you have to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. I don't care if you have to unload the truck down the street, which we had to do and wheel wheelbarrows up the street because the streets all blocked with the ambulance and the fire trucks. I mean, it happens every day. That's just like, Nothing. Wow. And then to get to the 34th floor, are you using the elevators and whatnot? To no, no. It's a, it's a new construction. So on the side of the building, they have what's known as a hoist. Oh, so okay. You to, okay. You have to 
shuttle everything up in bags and up and down. And it's, you know, wow. it, it it's a challenge. Definitely that's a, ton, a challenge. That's definitely a ton of labor for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But it comes down to the design, right? Design it with the proper plants and the light, lightweight soil. And same when we do designs in the suburbs, like how mm. do you get up? How do you build a swimming pool up a mountain? You know, it's logistically, it comes to the design for sure. Mm. It's all design. It's all design, man. I love that so much. Steve, before we go to for our break and then well, when we come back, we'll, you'll share three hacks to share with the audience. What is next for Steve Griggs? Are there any projects or new ventures on the horizon that you're particularly excited about? Always looking for the challenge. We just recently started going outside of New York. We've done mm -hmm. Massachusetts. I just recently got back from Sacramento doing a design out there. I like the challenges of do designing in other spaces. I would like yeah. to take it to the Caribbean. It's yeah. still it's the same design philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. It's just different plants and different materials. That's all it is. It's still yeah. the design process. That I like. I'm kind of liking that more of that travel and getting out of the New York in the, in the cold winter months because it's a very yeah. long winter here. I, so I, yeah, I totally I'm open agree. to go, you know, Caribbean <laughs> anywhere. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Awesome. We'll, we'll make sure that we get some clients from that region for you. Let's take a quick break, Steve. And then when we get back, we'll share three hacks for the audience. Looking for the ultimate live streaming and video production studio? Discover Ecamm Live, exclusively built for Mac. It's the leading solution for podcasting webinars, live streaming, and more. Elevate your content creation game and bring your ideas to life with Ecamm Live. Head on over to hacksandhobbies.com forward slash Ecamm and download your studio today. Start creating with Ecamm Live and elevate your audience engagement. Download now from hacksandhobbies.com forward slash Ecamm or tap on the link in the show notes. Hey guys, welcome back to the episode. We've been talking with Steve Griggs here on the podcast and such an awesome conversation. He is so full of wisdom here on the podcast. There's so much to learn. He's done some amazing work in landscape architecture. And this is the only thing that he says he knows, but he knows a lot more than just landscape design because he's been in business for over 40 years. He's been doing this. He's been doing some remarkable stuff and he has a hardcover book which looks absolutely gorgeous we'll have a link in the show notes but steve tell us three hacks to share for the audience that they can implement in their business and help them move forward biggest hack to get business always do what you say you're going to do and do it no excuses like if you're starting out in business, that's the one thing I can say. That's the mm -hmm. biggest hack I've learned in 40 years. That'll save you. Nobody wants to hear. We may be able to do it. I should be able to do it. I could be able to do it. You just say, absolutely, you can do it and get it done with no excuses. That by far will lead to many referrals and repeat business. And, and mm -hmm. that's hack number one. Number two, get yourself, write yourself a book. Everybody wants to hire the the. The guy, the guy that wrote the book, like that mm -hmm. gives you instant credibility, right? Yeah. That's hack number two. Hack number three, keep an eye on the money. Keep an eye on the money. Mm -hmm. Man, have I lost a lot of money just by doing, not keeping an eye on the money. Mm -hmm. You know, watch the cash flow, watch, you know, learn the finance part of business. Those are, man, if you can do those three hacks, you're golden. I mean, that the, the number three hack is very, very important because- that's literally, so we all know the story of Henry Ford and how he, you know, started this Ford Motor Company. He didn't do much schooling, right? He he left school at eighth grade or something. And he, he just loved working with motors and engines and, and whatnot. And he got so good that Westinghouse hired him because he knew how to fix these tractors. But then he went back to school to learn about finances, to learn about how to manage money. Because if you know how to manage money, you are golden. And you're absolutely right. Do the stuff that you say you do. Write a book so people know that you do the stuff that you say you do. And then handle and get a handle on that money. I love it. Thanks so much. 
because they don't teach that in school, right? They don't mm-hmm. teach that. And I'm and I you're so why. busy working, worrying about designing the, your craft, yeah. designing projects. Yeah. You said, oh, I'll just do a good job and the money will take care of itself. The money never takes care uh-uh. of itself. It's always Never. running, looking to run out. It's always looking to go. It's it's sure. it's in a constant flow, right? That's why we call it cash flow. It's not it's flowing in or flowing out. Fresh money. You need fresh money. Fresh money. Always in and out. The quicker it goes to the bank, you know, yeah. I'm always going to the bank. Mm-hmm. I'm always depositing checks mm-hmm. because it goes out fast. Yes. Like it's just constantly in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I love it. All right. Let's jump into our rapid fire questions. Oh, rapid is, fire. I like rapid, rapid fire. fire. Quick ones. I love them. Let's go. Right. <laughs> what is the one hobby that you wish you got into? I'm still going. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, we wish I got into I think anything you can still do is like, I don't wish I ever skydived. I mean, mm. actually, I'd like to try yoga. Mm. Like, you know, something that stretches your body and yeah. the hot yoga. I like to work out and sweat. I mean, I do a lot of other hobbies, but mm-hmm. like, Something, you know, I'm not a golfer. Yeah. Something, something, you know, something like yoga. I did see some bikes in your back background earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, went, oh. I, I like the biking. I love biking, man. It's, Do it's you, man? Thing. You like the biking? I'm a road biker myself. Oh, I actually I know did we the, spoke about that. The five boroughs in New York was my you first You told me ride. that. Yeah. And it's like, oh. And the craziest thing, we're, we're out there for like eight hours or something, probably less. But it was raining the whole time. 2016, May, it was raining the whole time. And my knees are killing like at mile 35 or whatever. How many like, miles gotta, is that? 40 miles. We went, through the, we went through the five boroughs, man. We went through the five boroughs. <laughs> I think my average was like probably 10 miles an hour. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to keep it easy. What is, what, do me a favor. What is that again? Because that's something I'm crazy enough to do. Like Five boroughs. It's basically in New York. They'll start in... Staten they'll Island, start where at, they start? They end at Staten Island, but they start probably in Manhattan. So they go yeah. through all the five boroughs. 30,000 people ride it <laughs> every year to do this. TD, I'll, I'll send you the link to it. TD Boroughs, five boroughs. It's uh, called TD Boroughs. TD. It's basically five called boroughs. the five boroughs uh, tour or something. I'll, I'll send the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But it, it's happening every I every would do that. Year. I would, I would so yeah, do man. that. Yeah, man. You're right there. Cause I, I, I drove up. I didn't even have a bike at then. So I rented a bike from this guy and he's like, here's a specialized bike. It's mine. I don't have any rental bikes. And this thing was so light. It's carbon. It was so light. I was like, oh my God, this is a dream to ride on. And that got me hooked into doing road biking because before that I was mountain biking for years and years on end. But the riding five boroughs changed my mind. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going oh, cool. to continue to bike. Oh, I, definitely. Yeah, I would do that. Love it. Next up, what did you want to be when you were a child? Landscaper. And you are. No, I, I <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I, not what my, how about this? What I didn't want to be is watching my father go to work every day because he's mm. like, oh, come join the union. There's good benefits. Yeah. And I was like, hell no. No, no, no. Like I see you getting up every day at four o'clock, no sleep, rain. Yeah, that's yeah. one thing I didn't want to do. Mm. That's for sure. So, so you designed the landscape. Like, hey, I'll let me design the stuff that you're going to work on. Yeah, I, I just mm. didn't want to be. I didn't want to work for somebody. I didn't want to yeah. be. I didn't want to go fifty years working for. The, that's just not my DNA. Love it. We, you, and I are very similar because I designed before people develop mobile apps and websites and whatnot. So it's, I'm doing, it's not like you're not getting up. You're not calling those, or you're not getting those. What's, what do they call when you're not on call kind of thing? Like, you know, for developers to have to be on call because if something breaks, somebody has got to go fix it. Right. But we design like, Hey, this is how it's supposed to be done. And then they uh, follow through. So I love that. Yeah. All right, next up, what is your favorite movie or TV show? I mean, favorite movie, you gotta have, I gotta go with, gotta go with Rocky. I mean, oh I my go God, Rocky. come on. I mean, that, that's, that is, what, that's the that's one. That's Rocky. That's, that's the one. Rocky. I'm Rocky. 
<laughs> Hell yeah, you are. I got beat up. So I, I got beat up. I just keep I just keep coming back. I'm Rocky. <laughs> Oh my God! I gotta go see that movie again. It's, that's that's a classic one. He's still working, man. He's still working. Creed three. Like he's he's the coach. He's the coach. He's you the coach. A, he's got a TV show out with his daughters. Like he's still working. He's still you working, know? man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh that's my God. Rocky. Well, I think you have the answer for the next question. What movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Ah, oh, that's a good one. I kind of like the hmm, tricky question. What? Well, I don't know. What would you want to be? I don't want to say Rocky. I mean, I don't <laughs> want. That's too obvious. We just talked about it. But uh, maybe Rambo. <laughs> maybe Rambo. I, I just just the you know everybody loves the character, right? Yeah. No, it's a good character too. The the, the one with Will Smith where he was the oh homeless. pursuit of, pursuit of happiness. Yeah. Yeah. I beat a white white Will Smith. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's just oh like my God. just that that you know, everybody, you know, oh, it could be Tom Cruise and yeah. Mission Impossible. Like yeah. uh, you know, oh, anybody you really want it, right? There's but the pursuit of heaven was a really good movie. Like, it's so powerful. powerful I mean, I, I I cry like every scene of like, oh my God, holy smokes, it's it's pulling all the heartstrings. It's it really does. It really so it's powerful. like so there's no, so when you're feeling down and you said, oh, poor me, poor me, mate. And mm -hmm. you feel bad for the kid. He's sleeping in the bathroom and he just kept, I mean, that's the story right there. That's the American dream. Yeah. Oh, you got to work for it. You got to work for it. All right. Next up, who is your favorite superhero? The Hulk. The Hulk. Oh. Sometimes the guys in the morning, Yeah. I ask my guys, that's funny you say that. I'll text him an emoji of the Hulk. I said, are we feeling strong today? Strong. Yeah. Send him the Hulk. It's like Hulk <laughs> smash. <laughs> I said, don't oh, get weak on me. Don't get weak be, on me. Because I'll start texting him at like 5.30 in the morning. Like uh -huh. I text, I, I email clients at 5 in the morning. Yeah. Another crack, another hack. Contact your clients early, early in the morning. They may not read it. But if sure. you send them an email at five o'clock in the morning and they wake up and they see that, they're like, wow, this guy's thinking this of guy's me. already awake. Like, yeah. Already awake, already thinking about me. Yeah. That by far has, has helped me tremendously. Huge hack. Huge, man. That, Huge that's hack. really powerful. I have a follow-up question on that one. Okay, let's say you're working a job. You, you haven't started. You just gave quotes. How how often do you follow up or they're like, oh, let's go and do it? I don't follow up. Okay. I mean. Because you've well, got like, so many. Like you call them up and in. say, hey, have you seen my proposal? Have you mm. looked at it? Like you don't need to do that. No. Okay. It, 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 people are smart. Because if they, they wanted they, to, they would have you're already. Not, you're, not, you're not calling me up to ask me how I'm doing. You're, you're mm. looking for the job. Like if right. you're. If you're on top of mind, they want you, they're going to hire you. You don't need to yeah. remind them to call you and look at the qu questions. You understand? Right. Like, right. And it always comes down to, I find it's typically price is, is a big barrier. It's mm -hmm. price. Mm -hmm. Where else is holding you back? Your price or you're afraid to spend the money? Like, which right. is it? Um, yeah. I'm the guy. Like, I am the guy to design your job. I don't know. Who, yeah. Who else are you going to bring in? That's the kind of attitude you need to have. Like, mm. you're, you have to be number one. Like, why are they going to hire, you know, if you're on trial for murder, let's say, yeah. you want the guy that just got out of law school, you want like a Johnny Cochran. You want the best. Yeah. You 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 want the best. I don't care. Whatever it is, you want the best. And you need to be the best and act like the best. Because if you don't, people can tell you're not the best mm. and they're going to move on. I love that. Another hack, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great hack. I mean, that's, I needed, I needed that. So, you know, it's, it, it, it is. It's, it's great advice. Thank you so much. Last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? Chess. Mm. Chess. Why not? Like, it makes you think. Yeah. Well, Monopoly, obviously, but like, those are the two. Yeah. And I'd be the guy, the little Monopoly man in, in Monopoly. The guy, the money guy. That would be. Yeah. It. If you want to me ask what I would be, I would be the Monopoly man in Monopoly, or I would be the 
actually, I would be the queen on the chessboard. Mm, queen on chessboard. Not the whoever, king, because they get whoever. squashed. Yes, <laughs> they do. <laughs> Steve, this was so much fun. Thank you so much uh, for bringing your, your your wisdom, your your know how, all the all the tips, all the hacks. This was a lot of fun. I, I wish that we can talk for a longer time and and get more uh, nuggets out of you. Where can the superpreneurs find you or find your book? Maybe I'll see you in the five borough bike tour. Yeah. Go find me on Instagram, stevegriggsdesign.com. I mean, Perfect. Steve Griggs Design at Steve Griggs Design is the Instagram. Steve right. Griggs Design is the website. The book is called Straight Dirt. New York's premier landscape designer tells it like it is. So Love that's kind of how we came up with that title because of the New York. And I just tell you it like it is. So we decided Straight Dirt. That's how Sweet that came dirt. out. Man, yeah, I love that. Of, you were a lot of fun. I really enjoy what you're doing here with the podcasting. And I really Glad. appreciate you helping me with my lighting and my camera because it was a disaster. <laughs> well, I'm glad to to have helped you and, you know, show those pointers because I am the best. <laughs> That's right. You're the best. You are the best lighting guy by far. Like, you're lighting. You look like a movie star, bro. You look like... <laughs> <laughs> you look like Martin Scorsese is behind the camera with your lighting. It's, it's <laughs> He's back here. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. I got, I got to tell you, it's like you got the glow. He's got the whole thing behind the perfect lighting. <laughs> Thanks so much, Steve. Appreciate you. Uh, I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks again. All right. For, thank you. Uh, take care. Thank you for listening to Hacks and Hobbies. You can find additional information on the guest today on their website, hacksandhobbies.com. Please feel free to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on upcoming interviews with amazing guests.